hello everyone welcome back to the channel so in this video we are going to talk about the tuples built in data structure in python so first of all tuples um, are the multiple data storage in which is a built-in data structure in python it is heterogeneous means you can store multiple types of data types in side of one tuple suppose you can store integer float string values boolean values all together in one tuple okay and indexing is present inside the tuple but they are immutable means mutability is not present in tuple okay so let's get started first of all we'll start with creating a tuple so tuples are always stored inside the round braces or you can say the parentheses okay So this is a simple way in which you can create a tuple and then print that tuple okay so let's get forward how to access the element present inside our tuple so for accessing the element so first element and because indexing is present so we can use the indexing to access the elements So, because we won't know that indexing is uh, in Python starts from zero, so for so the first value will be present at zero. So we have to just write the name of our tuple, and if you want to store it in a, a variable, so you can store it in a variable, and then you can just using the square braces, you can write. If you want to access the first value, you have to write zero, and then you're going to print the first element, and one will you will get print. The output will be one. Now suppose if you want to access the last element or you can directly use the print method also it means the print function also so what you have to do you will directly write inside the print function you will access your tuple then using the square braces you have to use the indexing and suppose if you want to print the last value so you will write minus one because the last value is present at the minus one value so banana will get print so if you want to access the elements from starting so you have to write 0 1 2 3 okay like that and if you want to access from the last from the ending so you have to write like minus 1 then minus 2 the second last, uh, second last element is present at minus 2 the third last is present at minus 3 like that okay now moving forward tuple unpacking so suppose uh, when i'll print my tuple you will see there are five values now we want to unpack this tuple these five values and store it in five different different variables so what we are going to do we are going to write like this abc then fruit one then fruit two and we will assign it to my tuple and then it's time for printing it so we will use f string for printing and we'll print a a then in the place of b we're going to print in place of c we will print c place of fruit one We are going to print the variable fruit1 and then fruit2 we will print and now you will see that we have unpacked our my tuple as using five different variables a b c fruit1 fruit2 you can see that and now if you want to print the single value also a so only one will get print if you have to use only two from that tuple so you can use the b for that if you want to use the banana so you can directly use the fruit too you don't have to use the whole tuple and access the uh, proper element you you have just unpacked your tuple using five different variables and each value now has been assigned to each variable and now one more thing i want to make you clear that suppose i'll interchange the name here from ba a b to b a now what will happen when I, when we print 
so you will see the values are also interchanged so it does not depend on the name it depends on the place that if one is present at the first place so whatever the name you are writing at the first place before comma from starting so that will be assigned to one and then if you are writing a in the, the second place then a will be assigned to two okay so this is the difference if uh, i'll change this fruit one to c so what will happen c will get value of apple means here at the place of fruit one c will come and at the place of c fruit one will come okay they depend on the place not on the name now moving forward the immutability so as i, I have told you uh, in the starting of the video that tuple doesn't have uh, mutability means they we cannot modify or assign values inside a tuple once a tuple is created we can't do any modification in that so and if you will do also if you'll do some modification also then it will generate an error and that error will be type error so as you can see i'm accessing the first element and then i'm assigning it to 10. now see a type error is coming and you can see the you can read the context also that tuple object does not support item assignment okay so we cannot assign values you cannot modify values okay moving forward and because they are immutable so the uh, no modi modification can be performed so what will happen there are some few methods only inside the tuple so we are going to see that methods now for finding the index there is a method index method and suppose if you want to find the index of banana so you will directly print so banana is present at the fourth value means the fourth index so it is giving the value four now if you want to see the index of suppose one so it will give us zero so this was for index index method then there is one count method for that i'll create a count and again we have to write my tuple then using the dot operator you have to apply the method count and inside the count you can give any name of that element inside your tuple and it will give us the exact value of that occurrence of that particular element in your tuple so only one because two is present only one time in our tuple so if i'll add one more two in our tuple so what will happen so value will be increased to two because now two is present two times in our particular my tuple okay now there is one more method and this is the universal method for finding the length of the tuple now it is used in a uh, list also it can be applied to tuple also so what you can do you can simply use a print length len, len function and inside the len function you can write the name of your tuple and it will give you the exact value of elements that are present inside your tuple and the number of values present inside your tuple is six okay now we are going to see how you can combine values or you can say combine tuples so we will create a tuple one in that we are going to store one two and three then we will create a tuple two and in that we are going to store apple banana and what cherry like this and then you we are going to create combine tuples and in that we are going to add tuple one it's tuple tuple two and then we will print Now you will see that tuple 1 and tuple 2 all have been combined together 
so this is similar to the concatenation in a string using the plus operator or when you are adding two list also so using the plus operator you can add two different types of tuples inside one tuple and if you print that combined tuple then you will get your values all together inside one tuple okay so moving forward we will see nested tuples so how you can create a nested tuple so for that first of all create an object next to tuple and in that first create a tuple and then if you have to store now like this then you will give one more tuple and in that suppose you have to store apple and some fruit names so you can do that also and let me so we can use the double quotes instead of the single quotes like this yeah so when you will print the nested tuple so you can say you have stored multiple values inside your tuple or what you can do you can remove this also yeah so if you want to add one more value means one more tuple inside your nested tuple so what you can do uh, suppose some veggies uh, so what veggies we can store uh, suppose there is brinjal and then there is potato so like this brinjal and potato means suppose you have different types of data types and here also or different categories of items so what you can do you can use the nested tuple so storing it and as you can see i have two integer values so i have stored that integer values in a different tuple okay now i have two fruits values so i have stored that two fruit values all together in one tuple and then uh, there are two veggies so i have stored the two veggies inside one tuple and then combining three i am storing this three tuples inside one tuple so that's how you can create a nested tuple okay now the last thing that is how we can use tuples in functions so first of all for that we are going to create a function name get coordinates so basically this function is for getting coordinates so coordinates as we know they are in x and y value so we are not going to give some random values we are going to just store x and y value and then we are going to return the x and y okay so now we know that uh, the function is get coordinates it has two coordinates x and y okay so now what we will do we are going to simply create two objects x chord and then y chord and then we are going to call the function get coordinates here so now the x value which we are returning will get stored in the x chord and the y value which we are returning will get stored in the y chord and now it's time for printing so this is called unpacking the result and using the f string you can do what you can print the x coordinates like this and you can write x chord and then the y coordinates in y chord and this is how you can call the function in two different types of variables and each value means the x value would get stored in x chord and the y value would get stored in the y chord okay so this is how tuples are very useful for us so i hope you like this video and thanks for watching the video we'll see you in the next video